Your first commitment is to God. The God who gave you life, who blew breath into you. Mama bought you shoes, daddy got you a bicycle. God gave you life. God won't bless who you pretend to be. He looks beyond the mask, beyond the superficial. Being vulnerable is not a weakness, it's a strength. But when we pretend, try to impress people, live for our image, that puts pressure on us. We have to perform, make sure they think I'm good, I'm strong, I'm talented. Take off the mask. You can be real. What they think of you doesn't really matter. They don't control your destiny. Why don't you let the people in your life off the hook? Maybe they did the best they could. They may have made decisions that you don't understand. Feels like it puts you at a disadvantage, but you didn't have to walk in their shoes. Maybe nobody gave them what they needed to give to you. Bottom line, nobody owes you anything. God is keeping all the records. He has seen everything that's happened in your life. You got to make changes. You got to say no. You got to disappoint people. You got to walk away from some stuff. You have to. The injustice, the bad breaks, the person that did you wrong, those people cannot pay you back. They cannot make you whole. Only God can. Quit looking to people to make it up to you. Quit trying to get somebody to apologize, to give you what they don't have, to admit they were wrong. If you'll go to God, he'll bring you out better. He'll make the rest of your life more rewarding, more fulfilling than it would have been if that hadn't have happened in the first place. In the morning, devour something. Throw your whole self at something. You'll never know what you can do and what you can be until you throw your whole self at it. Devour it. Attack it like you're going to kill it. Devour the prey. And in the evening, you divide the spoils. We have it backwards today. We want to divide the spoils in the morning. So we're blinging when we ought to be devouring. See, don't worry about whose name you wear when you're young. Worry about your name. You have to have a made up mind that you are in it for the long haul. It may be difficult. You have a good reason to walk away. Don't take the easy way out. Stay committed to your dreams. Don't give up on the promises God put in your heart. Stay committed to your job. Be a loyal person. Somebody they can count on day in and day out. You're not always going to feel like it. There will be good days and tough days. That's when you have to dig your heels in and say, I'm going to do the right thing when it's hard. I'm committed to this job. I'm going to be my best, even though my supervisor isn't treating me right. I'm committed to my dreams. I'm not going to give up because I don't see anything happening. I'm going to keep believing, expecting, thanking God. I know it's on the way. God rewards consistent, faithful, committed people. There are two powers in life that every one of us have to deal with every day. The two powers in life that you can never control or stop. The two most difficult components in life to manage is time and change. The key to your future is the successful management of time and change. You can't stop time, you can't stop change. So all you can do with them is manage them. And you become what you are based on how you manage both of them. I want to simplify life for you. You are simply a product of how you use your time and how you manage the changes you've been through so far. And what you become in 10 years from now will be a result of how you manage time and the changes. What did I do with the year that just passed? How much of it did I waste watching television? Being with people who had no interest in success? Being involved in habits that didn't improve my life? What did I spend that year on? Time and change are the raw materials of life. These are two things you can't stop and they keep moving. They keep happening and they build your life. Time and change are building blocks. In other words, time and change are the only commodities in life that every human have in common. 
All of us are given 24 hours every day, and all of us are subject to change every day. So no one is better or less when it comes to time and change. Time also gives you this opportunity for you to make plans, to plan your life. And the secret to life is effective management, time and chance. You cannot control time nor change, but you can plan the way you use them. Successful people are simply people who effectively planned how they use time. Someone said, if you aim at nothing, you will never miss. Planning creates bullseyes. It creates destinies. It creates targets. Without a plan, you are just shooting in the wind. Don't allow another year be a year of just shooting in the wind. I mean, really, how many years ago did you come up with what you could and couldn't do in your life? How many years ago? Most people, if they really look at how they're living their life today, it's based on a set of standards, a set of beliefs that they made choices about 10, 20, 30 or more years ago. I mean, very often we made decisions in our youth about what to believe, about what we were capable of, about who we are as a person, and that becomes the glass ceiling, if you will, that controls us. I'll, I'll give you an example. Look at your physical body. Your physical body today is an absolute reflection of only one thing, not your goals, not your desires, but your standards. Again, the strongest force in the human personality is this need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. And that's what's going to make your death so sad, is that you never live first. You never fully engage. You never fully studied. You never fully invested in anything or anybody. You want to get something that you are not willing to give. You have never been joined. You just wore the dress, got the plaque, they threw the rice, you took the job, but you've never seen what you could be if you threw your whole self at your dream. Despite everything that's been written about the importance of goal setting, very few people actually put it into practice. It's always amazed me the way the average guy puts more thought and effort into planning his two-week vacation than he devotes to planning his life. Challenge creates strong character, and goals represent challenge in its most positive form. Leaders have their personal goals clearly in focus, as well as the goals of the organization. In fact, one of the principal responsibilities of leadership is defining goals for the vast majority of people who aren't able to do it for themselves. How do you keep the faith? How do you keep your head above water? How do you march against the tide? How do you stand up when everybody around you seems to be falling down? How do you keep firm and solid footing when everything underneath you seems to be slipping away? How do you keep the faith? You've got to be born again. And when you're born again, there are some things you just have to take. Just some things you have to stand up under. There's just some fights you're going to have to have. To a great extent, I think perseverance can be learned. And there are some very powerful techniques that can help you learn it. By far, the most important tool you can use in developing perseverance is a personal list of challenging, realistic, well-defined, and highly rewarding goals. Goals are major to a genuinely success-oriented person. Without them, you're just playing around. In recent years, we've overlooked the importance of perseverance to some extent, because we believe so strongly in talent as the true determinant of success. For instance, there are a great many special programs in the schools for so-called gifted children. And these programs can begin as early as the first grade. A child is tested, and he's either gifted or he isn't. He either has talent or he doesn't. Our expectations of him change based on how he does on those expectations for himself change also. Of course, there are some educational systems that place a little less faith in talent and a little more faith in long, hard work. And since those systems have been the source of some incredible progress in recent years, I think it's important to look closely at perseverance and how you can get some of that stuff 
whatever your gifts and talents may be. You don't have to lose your faith just because God didn't say yes to what you requested him to do. You don't have to have a nervous breakdown, a pity party, throw in the towel just because you didn't get the job, didn't get the house, didn't get the healing, didn't get what you wanted from the Lord. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on? I, I should get into the office earlier. I should be, you know, more confident. Whatever your should list is, when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm going to find a way, or I'm going to make a way. Some people get it the first time they hear it. And then some folk got to go home and chew on it and think about it and turn it over in their minds. And sometimes it takes a year, five years, eight years. You can't be impatient with the seed coming up because every seed does not come up at the same time. You have to be patient with the soil. You have to tend it. You have to take care of it. You have to make sure that when the seed is ready to be cast, that the soil is ready to receive it. The opposite of perseverance is procrastination. Perseverance means you never quit. Procrastination usually means you never get started. Although I consider the inability to finish something to be a form of procrastination. Ask people why they procrastinate and you'll often hear something like this. I'm a perfectionist. Everything has to be just right before I can get down to work. Not too much noise, no telephone calls interrupting me, no distractions. And of course I have to be feeling well physically too. I can't work when I have a headache. The other end of procrastination, being unable to finish, also has a perfectionist explanation. I'm my own harshest critic. I'm just never satisfied. If all the I's aren't dotted and all the T's aren't crossed, I just can't consider that I'm done. That's just the way I am and I'll probably never change. A fault is being turned into a virtue. The perfectionist is saying that his standards are just too high for this world. This fault into virtue syndrome is a common defense when people are called upon to discuss their weaknesses. But in the end, it's just a very pious kind of excuse making. It certainly doesn't have anything to do with what's really behind procrastination. Only quality people. As you think about your goals and dreams, this is not for everybody. You want to build an organization with only quality people. Not people who need more, but people who want more. You want to surround yourself with people that are hungry. People that are hungry are willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow, others won't have. If you do what is easy, always looking for a way to give yourself a pass, to let yourself off the hook, to do what everybody else is doing, a job, the journey of the broke. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But there's something in you that says, you know, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. There is an old person down inside of you that's dependent on you to be smart. It's the person you're going to be 30, 40 years from now. Do not disappoint that person by being foolish through the strongest years of your life and then when your back is out and your knees are swollen you can't move around now you're out there gonna get your grind on now the basis of procrastination could be fear of failure that's what extreme perfectionism really is once you take a hard look at it what's the difference whether you're afraid of being less than perfect or afraid of anything else you're still paralyzed by fear. What's the difference whether you never start or never finish? You're still stuck. You're still going nowhere. You're still overwhelmed by whatever task is before you. You're still allowing yourself to be dominated by a negative vision of the future in which you see yourself being criticized or laughed at or written out of town on a rail or punished. 
Of course, this negative vision of the future is really a mechanism that allows you to do nothing. It's a very convenient mental tool. Commitment means standing up for your life. It means honoring yourself. It means beginning to say and to, to see and recognize your alignment and oneness with the universe. And that you are a channel for life to express truth. And we short circuit it with anger. We short circuit it with fear. We short circuit it by being lazy or apathetic or giving up easily. Why, why, why? We say, oh, it's too hard, it's too hard. We don't challenge our spirit ladies and gentlemen there's nothing as powerful as the human spirit you can't destroy it. you can pervert it but you can't destroy it. so when you begin to say what is it that i want to leave what contribution that i want to begin to make what difference do i want to make in life what chances i need to take what fears do i need to step on what risks do i need to begin to embrace you can either live your dreams or live your fears you have got to get to a point where you say i'm sick and tired of living like this there's got to be more that's see that's when people go out and, and strike out on their dreams well i'm going to tell you how to overcome procrastination i'm going to show you how to turn procrastination into perseverance the first principle is break it down no matter what you're trying to accomplish whether it's writing a book or climbing a mountain or painting a house the key to achievement is your ability to break down the task into manageable pieces and knock them off one at a time focus on accomplishing what's right in front of you at this moment and ignore what's off in the distance someplace substitute real-time positive thinking for negative future visualization that's the first all-important technique for bringing an end to procrastination procrastination won't be a problem because the task is now so small that fear won't kick in and it all begins with those three words break it down what is the vision for your life what are the ideas and the dreams for your life what are you supposed to be doing? Who are you? What are your gifts and talents? What is your ultimate destiny and your goals? God will never give you something somebody else is supposed to have. When I'm in a storm, I'm trying to get control. But God's message to all of us whenever we feel like we are in a storm is not to keep control, but to keep courage. You keep courage and God will take control. He's gonna get you through this storm you just got to keep current. My second technique for defeating procrastination is also only three words long. Write it down. You're now going to be writing about the present, just as you experience it every day. Instead of describing the things that you want to do or the places you want to go, you're going to describe what you actually do with your time and you're going to keep a written record of the places you actually go. You're going to keep a diary of your activities and you're going to be amazed by the distractions, detours, and downright waste of time that you come up with during the course of a day. All of these get in the way of achieving your goals. What else do you have to do to gain the benefits of this extremely powerful productivity technique? Nothing. You don't have to do anything else at all. It's just a process for making yourself aware of how you actually spend your time. You will naturally and effortlessly begin to reorganize your life. Perhaps that seems like too much to believe, but it's true. This is how you get yourself started. This is how you put an end to procrastination.